you, setting your ways, taking a woman and three kids into your house. It could be fatal. Why do we have to leave Fort Wayne? Because we're broke. We don't have any money. Mom told me to tell you that we're happy to be here because there aren't many old men who want to put up with us. David has a room all to himself. I'm a boy. Big deal. You're a boy, so you get your own room, and I'm almost 16, have to room with a child? Kleenex, chess. I'll be a mole. I'll work from inside. Why do you want to wear him down? That's what you're supposed to do with old guys. Me, Kaplan. Come in here morning and tell me I'm up. Of course I ain't up. Then you come in the bedroom and tell me you're not up. Had you rather write didn't? I mean, if it bothers you, I can. I'd rather you get a cup of coffee. Like the other morning, you come in, you find me lying flat on my back with my eyes closed, and you say, Gus, you're sleeping. You're angry. No. Where'd you find the paper? In the Azaleas. It must be sick. He's getting closer to the house. Well, give me a piece of it. Which part do you want? The least objection. Yeah. Thank you, sir. They ate their grandmother. Excuse me? It says here this old lady died. She was cremated. Her ashes were mailed to her daughter in a yeast box, thinking it was yeast. She made biscuits out of it and fed them to her family. They ate their grandmother. Kaplan, seeing you first thing in the morning may be a little more than I can handle. <laughs> Gus. Does getting old ever bother you? No. Well, it would if I thought I was going to wind up in the biscuits. Gus, you always talk like you're so sure of things. Now, how do you do that? Six and a half decades. If I didn't have some pretty strong beliefs by now, I would have been wasting my time now, wouldn't I? Are you that cocky about your daughter-in-law and her three kids coming today? It is today. It is. It's today. It's the same today that's circled in red on the calendar by your sink. Yes, son of a gun. Gus, you're an old man. You're used to things being done in a certain way. You're setting your ways. Taking a woman and three kids into your house, it could be fatal. <laughs> They'll survive. Gus, be serious. Okay. You know, we're not talking about just any woman and any three kids. We're talking about my son's wife and my grandchildren. They're my family, you know. 
I know family may be an old-fashioned word. I'm a little old-fashioned myself. We're not talking about yesterday's kids, Gus. These are modern kids. If it isn't on a cassette, they don't relate. Oh, relax. This is a good woman. She'll have these kids under control. Everybody out of the car right now. Come on, let's go. This stop is for me. David, you're coming too. The people have squabbled ever since we passed the Allen County line, and now that's over. We're going to the restaurant, going to have a nice cold drink, and when we're done, we're going to come back out, get in the car, and behave like citizens all the way to your grandfather's house. Is that clear? Or like that. Yes, okay. Inside, everybody. David, you too. You said he did. And I've never known your grandfather to say anything he didn't mean. Of course, it might be a bit of an adjustment living with him. What happened to David? What does adjustment mean? It means you're going to have to pretend you're civilized. Pass me the cream there, little darling. Do what? The cream? It's that white stuff over there you put in your coffee. It keeps you from going blind. You work out, huh? It could work out, too. Just play your cards right. Cream? May I please have the cream? Mom. Mom. What's for you? Chris wants cream. What does she want the cream it's for? It's not for me. It's for... Isn't my daughter the most polite 15-year-old you ever saw? Fifteen? Mm-hmm. They had a go. She was five. Isn't that amazing? Thanks for the cream. Your history. I still don't see why Arthur didn't come with us. Because I think we're quite enough for your grandfather's first bite. I just think of this as paving the way for Arthur. Huh? David, if this is a game, I don't know the rules. If you're doing this sick, you can try it after me. I don't mean this game. I mean the game where you stare out the window for three days at 1,600 miles. I don't enjoy being treated like I'm invisible, you know. I'm talking to you, David. This isn't exactly the place for a family discussion. Any place I choose is the place for a family discussion. Why do we have to leave Fort Wayne? Because we're broke. You understand that. We don't have any money. And your grandfather has graciously offered to take us into his home until we're... until I'm back on my feet. I knew everybody in school. I was on the soccer team. I was going to run for class. I, 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 that's all I hear from you. I hope you're not that selfish, David. I'm not selfish. I'm just looking after me. No, you're wrong. I'm looking after you. I always have. And that's the primary reason we're going to your grandfather's house. Because I am looking after you and your sisters. David, whether you like it or not, the day your daddy died, you took a very big step towards manhood. That's not fair. It's just what is. And that's what we have to deal with. And you've always been able to count on me. This time I'm counting on you. In the car. Well, what's the matter with the tray, Miss Finley? I didn't say anything was the matter with it. Well, then why'd you call me out here to look at it? Oh, I called you out here to look at my car. Your tree dropped sap all over it. Why don't you move your car? Then you wouldn't have the problem. Mr. Witherspoon, my car is in my driveway, and I'm certainly not going to move it because of your tree. So you want me to move the tree? I'm not telling you to move it. I'm telling you to cut it down. Excuse me. You heard me. Humor me, will you? Tell me once again how you want me to cut that tree down. That tree's 75 years old. It was 50 years old when you moved in here, madam. That doesn't mean it's sacred. It is not a sacred tree. Nobody worships that tree. 
No, they don't. And it's not sacred. But my wife Mary loved and cared for that tree. And I can promise you one thing, Mrs. Findlay. That's the last tree in America that's going to be cut down. Well, we'll just have to see about that, won't we, Mr. Witherspoon? That we will. Who is that? That's my daughter-in-law and my grandchildren. Hiya, kids. They look like they've come to stay for quite a while. They have, Mrs. Finley. They're moving in. Well, come on, come on, get out of the car. Welcome, 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 young man, welcome. And what about your mother? Isn't she coming? Uh, she doesn't feel well. I think she must be alone. Uh -huh. All right, in the house with you. Oh, Mom told me to tell you that we're happy to be here, because there aren't many old men who want to put up with us. I see. Are you coming in? Uh, no, I'm just taking a, a quiet moment, Gus. Well, you're entitled to that. I'll go away and leave you alone. No, please, don't go. Sit with me. You're a grown-up. Just this old station wagon. Multiplied by 1,900 miles, divided by three children, multiplied by three days. It's worse than Devil's Island, Gus. I don't mean that. Well, maybe I do a little bit, but just for right now. I'm a little afraid this may become habit forming this feeling. I'll be all right. I will, I keep telling that to myself. Sometimes I say it a lot, over and over and over, and sometimes I, I believe it and... Hmm. Those are great kids in that house. Underneath all the crap, they're just great. But Gus, at your age, you don't need the crap. <laughs> don't you worry about me, honey. I'm crap proof. Do you really mean that? Sure. Besides, that's my house, and I'm bigger than they are. Well, it's our house, and we're bigger than they are. Welcome home. All right, guys, you ready for this? No, not really. Okay, here goes. There's a telephone in his room, and there's one downstairs in the hall, and that's it. How are we going to get a private phone call? We just got here. Who's gonna call us? There's one TV downstairs in the living room. It's a real nice one, so that's good. And there's also a kind of a phonograph there, too. What do you mean, a kind of phonograph? See, it's got a switch for 45 and 33. It's also got a switch for 78. What's a 78? Your grandmother sat here where your mother's sitting. Your dad's brother, your Uncle Ben, sat right there where David's sitting. Your dad sat there. We had a lot of good arguments at this table. We never solved very much of anything, but one thing about it, anybody could say whatever they had on their mind. Do you mean that, Grandfather? Sure I do. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't. Well, since this is our first night here, I wasn't going to say anything about this till tomorrow. But at home, I have my own room. Yeah. What? home, you had your own room. What's the rest of the story? No, no, there's no story. At home, I had a room of my own, and now I have to share with her. Well, there's two beds in that room. Well, David has a room all to himself. I'm a boy. Big deal. You're a boy, so you get your own room, and I'm almost 16, have to room with a child? Kleenex chest. No, look, wait, I am wait, not... Okay, 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 okay. If you're all done, go get unpacked. Hold it, hold it, hold it. The very last time your dad sat at this table, 
I mean as a kid. He was really grumpy about something. I don't remember what it was, but I said to him, I said, look, kid, if you're not happy here, go jump out of an airplane. Is that it? Is that the whole story? No. The very next morning, he joined the paratroopers. He spent the next three years jumping out of airplanes. When he come home, he said, not too bad around here, Pop. Don't let me stop you from unpacking. Didn't you miss him? to give some in order to get some. And your dad come home a heck of a lot better man. David loved Johnny so much. I see that. So do I. Give me them dishes. No, Gus, you don't have to bother with that. Look, you cook, so uh, I'll clean the dishes. Nope. You're tired. I'll clean them. I was hoping you'd say that. Tell you what we'll do. Beginning tomorrow, we'll take turns. How's that? Beginning tomorrow, them kids will take turns. How's that? Gus, mm -hmm. would you mind if I took your paper upstairs? I don't want to take a look at the help wanted ads. Nope. Seems like there's plenty of time for that, though. I'm not sure you know what's going on out there. You know, I've been doing some homework. Listen to this. Aerospace and Electronics Company has excellent opportunity for experienced senior systems programmer analyst. Position requires sharp individual having experience with JRT35, COBOL2, Fortran, and man-man software. I don't even know what those things are. My daughter's more employable than I am because she's had a couple years of computer training at school. And now this paper tells me that I'm obsolete. Hmm. I'd like to get a look at the computer that makes a woman obsolete, but it's a beaut. Mm -hmm. I didn't like him. It's just gonna take some work to wear him down, that's all. Well, where are you gonna start? I mean, it's his house. I'll be a mole. I'll work from inside, like a spy. I like him. Will you stop saying that? Nobody hates him. Then why do you wanna wear him down? It's what you're supposed to do with old guys.
Hi. I'm Jesse Witherspoon, and I'm here to see Mr. Cathcart. According to what I read here, you haven't held down a job in 16 years, Mrs. Well, that's... Witherspoon. Right. May I ask what you've been doing? My husband died about six months ago. I have three children, and we have virtually no money, and I can type about 50 words a minute, and I... And you want this job a lot? A lot. Really a lot. How are you at geography, Mrs. Witherspoon? Well, I... What? Tuesdays and Thursdays, I see clients in my home. When they see what kind of a house I've designed for myself, it helps them explain better to me what they have in mind for their own place. Speeds up the entire process. And my place is very difficult to find. You only can attest to that, can't you? Anyway, here's the address. Address casual. Well, and if you can arrive between 9 and 9.30, we can do some busy work before Mr. my... Mr. Cathcart, are, are you saying that I have a job? We can't keep a thing from you, can we? You start tomorrow. Oh, well, thanks. I'll be there. I don't care if this place is ten feet underground. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there. Uh, I'll be there tomorrow morning. Thank you so much, Miss. Yeah, Mrs. Witherspoon. Aren't you even curious about the salary? Well, there is a salary, isn't there? There is one, yes. Then yeah, that works for me. That's just fine. That's just great. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. I'm gonna miss you, Gus. Excuse me? I feel like you moved away and somebody else is living in your house, or you've been taken over by the invasion of the body snatchers. What are you talking about? Ah, it's just not the same. I'd come over every morning, we'd have a nice cup of coffee together. We'd read the paper together. Kind of got my day started, I don't know, listening to you grumbling about taxes and the communists. Yo, you're talking about me like I'm dead. Want to head back now? Let's finish the game. Unless you're tired. Ah, I just thought I'd give you a hand cleaning up, that's all. Well, if I was going to clean anything up, Joe, I'd appreciate the hand, but see, I'm not. I don't clean up messes I didn't make. Well, how's your first day in school, kids? Kids stared at us. Even the dorky one stared. You learn anything? No. Good. You stay home tomorrow and learn how to clean up the kitchen. You see, I was too busy in the bedroom picking this junk up off the floor. These are my new skates. Are they? Well, see, I found them down there with the trash, so naturally I figured they needed throwing out. Now, you want to hear something funny? The waste baskets were empty. You Not threw a this thing. in the trash? I did throw it in the trash. It was down there with the rest of this junk. I figured he didn't want it anymore. It's not mine. It's mine. It took me three months to build. You made that? Yeah, I made it. It's a Boeing ATF. You know, it'll fly faster, turn tighter, accelerate quicker, and be easier to fly than any other machine of today. And you threw it in the trash. I Hold it. You come right back here right now. Come on. Right now. Now you listen to me, all three. If you want this stuff, you keep it picked up and you keep it put away. Then I won't throw it out. Now, get busy. Come on. What's the matter with her? She wants to be a test pilot. Do you believe it? I mean, my sister. That weirdo wants to grow up to be Chuck Yeager. I can't stand it. I don't think she's weird at all. She's always wanted to be a test pilot.
I put it on the floor. There isn't room on the table. If I put it in the bed, I might sit on it. If it's on the floor, I'll walk around it. That's not an excuse. It's an explanation. You know, at home I had my own room. It wasn't much, but at least it was my own and there was room for everything. Honey, this is really quite a thing you've built here. I'm not a baby. You don't have to pacify me. Uh, I don't know how. And if I did, I wouldn't. But you better tell me what's on your mind. Are you ready? I mean, are you ready for this? I was taking four honors classes at my last school. I was getting straight A's except for one B. I got that B in chemistry because I told the teacher if he didn't keep his hand off my butt, I'd chop it off. <laughs> you told him that, did you? Well, I didn't say butt, I said body. I said my body is private and it's my business, so keep your hand to yourself. By golly, that's a reasonable request. It wasn't a request because I wasn't polite about it. And he gave me a B. The point is, at my last school, I was taking four honors courses. Advanced courses. And would you believe the school doesn't even have an honors program? There's no way I can get into the Air Force Academy if I graduate from this school. They don't even have a track team. So you want to go to the Air Force Academy, do you? I want to be an astronaut. Like jumping out of an airplane? You know that that's all I've been working for since the sixth grade? Some people don't take me seriously because I'm a girl. By golly, I do. I mean, if you built that, I take you serious. You come with me. I want to show you something. Did you build all this? The tunnels, the houses, and everything? Every stick of it I built. I got hooked on these trains when I was just a kid, maybe only six or seven years old. They were going to be my future. My space is yours. You know, I never even been on a train. That's a shame, honey. Riding the train's good for the soul. Here, you want to run this thing? Yeah. That's a rheostat. I know, I was watching you. I spent most of my life on trains. You know that the railroads used to tie America together? Why'd you quit? I didn't quit. I got promoted. Sent me upstairs. Put me in an office with a bunch of nitwits who thought they ran the railroad. Took all the fun out of it. That's why I'm going to see to it you get to that Air Force Academy. Nobody's going to take away your hopes I'm and dreams. Home. Where is everybody? We're down here, honey. I have two announcements to make. Sounds hopeful. <laughs> what are they? I've got a job. Well, sure you got a job. You're a Witherspoon. What else? Arthur's here. Oh, Arthur, great! Who the hell Arthur is? Want to sign here? Why? This is 14 Astor Street, ain't it? Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, uh, I'll sign it. Mains with us, school? Yes, that's right. That's Arthur. Arthur's our track basket. David taught him to be a real good watchdog. Yeah, that's about all he does is watch. When he's awake, I mean. Why does he look like that? Why is he so depressed? Well, he's been to a breeding farm. He goes every year. Always comes home wanting to roll over and have a cigarette. <laughs> Could I talk to you in private just for a minute? Sure. Yes. Why didn't you tell me you had a dog? Well, 
Arthur's like one of the family. I, I guess I just forgot to mention it. No, that's not true. I didn't forget to mention it. I made a, a conscious effort not to mention it. Why? Because I remember Johnny saying that you didn't get on with dogs very well, or you didn't like them, or something about you and dogs. I don't remember. Oh, Chris, you got to stay calm, honey. He's a very good dog. And he's the only dog the kids have ever had, and I didn't have the heart to leave him home, Gus. I... <laughs> oh, no. Not the dog. Oh, Gus, no. I have pills for this. Well, I... Come on, just come on, boy. Come on. No. Um, David, go take him to the attic first. I mean, he'll be with you more than he'll be with us. And your room is the first one he ought to see. Okay. Come on, Arthur, come on. What difference does it make which room he sees first? The difference is that Arthur's all excited. And if he's going to have an accident, better in David's room than in mine. Ours. Oh, well, thanks for reminding me. Any time he needs reminding, just look around. One side of the room is obviously ruled by a neat freak, while the other contains a regular person who is wonderful. Actually, you are wonderful. What? Well, for a troll. You see, Mom and Dad found you under a bridge. They didn't have enough money to buy Arthur, so they brought you home instead. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Wake up, big boy. Come on, come alive. You didn't walk your dog, and he's got a bellyache because you didn't walk him. But I know you forgot. That's why I'm here to remind you. It's dark outside. Well, sure, it's 4.30 in the morning. Of course it's dark. Now get up. When you come back, you can finish your homework. Then you can have an early breakfast with me and Joe Kaplan. Be a first. when cutting in order to have control at all times. Be aware of limbs above you. Vibrations from the saw could cause rotten limbs to fall. Put throttle to lock position before starting. If saw is cold, put choke lever to right side for one or two pulls. If saw is warm... Dog. Ah! Oh. 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 Serves you right, Mrs. Finley. Oh. 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 House rules, according to Gus. Number one. No one allowed in the bathroom in the morning longer than 15 minutes. No exceptions. Number two, any laundry not hampered will be picked up and put in the garage rag box and used for towels on Saturday's car washes. Number three, rock and roll music will be permitted between the hours of... Mom! Good morning. Well, there's some get-up. Gus? You made up a whole list of rules about how things are going to be around here. And you put it on my children's door. And you never even asked me about it. That doesn't work for me. I'm their mother. And you're their grandfather. But if we don't decide together what's best for them, we're going to go to war. 
No, I don't want that to happen. And I don't think you want that to happen. You gonna wear this to work? Am I talking to myself now? Honey, this don't look like work clothes to me. It's look like dancing clothes. I mean it, Gus. If you wear that to work, you might have somebody's hand on you where it doesn't belong. If it happens, check with Chrissy. She's got a speech all made up for that. I have to look right. You met a boy? No. Grandpa's taking me to talk to the principal. He's gonna help me get a transfer to a school with an honors program. Suppose you can't get the transfer. Well, Grandpa says that there's always somebody else that we can talk to. Even bosses have bosses. Maybe it'll work. Maybe what will work? Gus on us. Mm. You look nice. Thanks. Chrissy. Come on, honey, let's get a move on. Excuse me, where is Mr. Cathcart? Oh, um, over there. Mr. In sweaty. He waves for you. In sweaty? Yes. Um, many mirrors. Um, cushions. He waves for you. In sweaty. Schedule. Well, you said it was hard to find, so I left early. Good. Mm -hmm. Let me just catch a shower and uh, we can play. Play? Yeah. The uh, fun things. The fun things? Work. My work is fun. Oh. Oh. What, <laughs> something? You know, you might want to talk to your houseboy. It's just the way he chooses to describe your room and what goes on here, and just something else. That Somebody had said to me, well, clearly I was mistaken, but I thought you were going to make a pass at me. <laughs> a pass? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Wrong with the liver? Liver isn't good enough for something to be wrong with it. <laughs> and you? It smells gross, like something died. Something did die. The very calf we got this liver from died. It must have been liver disease that killed it. How about you? I'm not thinking about the liver. I'm thinking about the meeting. I mean, what if they don't give me a transfer? What meeting? The school board meets tonight, according to Chris's principal. You talked to the principal? I did. I took the ball right by the horns. And you really think that they'll let her transfer to a school that has an honors program? Sure, why not, don't you? Well, I don't know. I, it, I don't know what things are like here in California, but in Indiana, the state pays a school something like now, $2,500 a student for everybody enrolled. They don't want to give that up. Not talking about money here. I'm talking about what's fair. Well, fair costs more. I will be excused. If you don't eat your liver, you get no pie and ice cream. It's a small price to pay. Go on. I better go get ready. Um, we don't have much time.
about you. What's the matter with you? Oh, I'm just tired as all. Don't you get tired, Gus? Sure. I worked a whole week, you know, and I'm... I'm wrung out. I've got everything squeezed out of me. I... Say, do you suppose you could handle this meeting for me tonight? Sure. <laughs> I see you're not up to it. You're tired. Mm. Okay. You go up there and get in your little bed. Let old Gus handle everything, punkin. Good night. Night. Night, night. Guess when you said... Ladies and gentlemen of the board, may I introduce Miss Chris Witherspoon. I met with the young lady earlier this week and attempted to clarify the board's position regarding transfers. The fact that she's here tonight seemed to indicate that I was unsuccessful. Ms. Witherspoon? Yes, I'm here. As a recent transfer, we welcome you to Highland Park High School. Thank you. We're always happy to have a grade-A student such as yourself. That's why the board is reluctant to grant you the transfer you request. I need an honors program. Your school has none. Miss Witherspoon, please be patient with us. We have plans to begin an honors program next semester in uh, biology and English. You have a copy of my transcript. Now you can see that my last school I was taking honors English, honors biology, honors chemistry, and honors calculus. Yes, 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 yes. My but... course of study is designed to get me accepted into the Air Force Academy. I beg your pardon? The Air Force Academy. Do you have any idea how much that kind of an education will cost, young lady? I know it costs and a lot I of money, but... the taxpayers have a reasonable concern that three years or so after you graduate, a young girl like yourself might go all moony-eyed over some down, snappy buddy. talker. Don't Next put thing, you yourself through any more of this. You don't have to sit and listen to this guy, and you don't have to argue with him either. I don't think I know who you are, sir. My name's Gus Witherspoon, and I'm her grandpa. And she wants out of this school, see, because she wants to go to the Air Force Academy. She wants to be a test pilot. Yes, but I just explained to this oh, girl here. Again. You'll embarrass yourself. My granddaughter wants to transfer into a school where she can qualify for the Air Force Academy because she wants to get into the space program. Look, Mr. Witherspoon, you're going to have a very difficult time convincing the board that this girl here... What really is, isn't it? It's because she's a girl. Now, if she were a boy, you'd shake her hand and slap her on the back and send her on her way, wouldn't you? I think this case bears further thought. We will give you our final decision at the next We want your answer now, sir. And if you don't want to give it to us, if you want to continue to postpone it, we'll go to court with you. You see, we're not talking about home economics here or light housekeeping. We're talking about the equality of men and women under the Constitution of the United States. We're talking about national security. And my attorney's going to want to talk to you about those things when he brings a class action suit against you. <laughs> you don't have the nerve. Excuse me. Don't you ever bet I don't have the nerve. And when we're all through talking about the Constitution and the equality of men and women and whatnot like that, we're sure going to want to talk to you about personal damages. I want this girl out of my school. Do it now. Chris, only what you said. Don't worry, I'll be fine.
feels like quite a lot to me. Can I stay down a while? Yes, you may. thing that might be a little irritating to a grown woman sometimes. I'm trying to remember that. Of course, you know, of course, if she were tired and feeling kind of beaten up by the world, I mean, it wouldn't be so bad then. I'll try to remember that. Good night. Good night, Punkin. Sleep tight. 